We should all hail our new world leader. It's Imran Youssef! <laughs> BBC Radio Asian Network. This is good. Well, the thing is, um, I wasn't born in this country. I wasn't even born in Asia. I was actually born in East Africa. Yeah. Now I don't. I know I don't look like somebody who was born in East Africa, but that's where I was born. Born in Mombasa, Kenya. That's where my brothers were born. That's where my parents are born. In fact, my parents can speak an East African language. They can speak Swahili fluently. Yeah. But they never taught me or my brothers. Same time they want to talk about us in the house, they bust out the Swahili, and we have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Right? And because of that, you know what? I've been trying to learn Swahili because I want to claim some of my African heritage. Yeah? I've been learning Swahili from an iPad app. Because mm. <laughs> you know what? Every now and then, someone pops up from the audience to go, ah, you are from Kenya. I am also from Kenya. Habari yako. <laughs> and that used to catch me off guard. But now I can look them straight in the face and go, masanduku yako wapi. <laughs> Which stuns them, much like it has to you. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly because it means, where are the suitcases? <laughs> It was a free app. <laughs> Wasn't many options in there for light conversations after a comedy club. What am I meant to do? So even though I come from East Africa, ethnically though, I'm Indian. My great grandparents came from India. Um, and the reason I think we ended up in East Africa is at some point, a couple of hundred years ago, the British turned up in India, met my great grandparents and said, hey, would you like to come to East Africa and help us exploit some black people? Yes, why not? Everybody else is doing it. <laughs> hey, don't hate me. I'm just a byproduct of this. It wasn't my idea, right? So, and when I realised, I've been out to India now for the, I've been out for the last, I've been out about four times in the last few years, and um, I really enjoy it when I go out there. But every time I go out there, they don't treat me like one of their own. Indian people don't treat me like one of their own. I get treated like an outsider, because even though I look like them, I sound like this, and they all have the nerve to laugh at the way that I talk. <laughs> Completely oblivious to the fact that Bud Bud Ding Ding stuff isn't helping them. Listen, guy, the way you guys, the way you guys speak is funny because when you speak English, you mix up your V's and your W's. <laughs> no, V <we> don't. <laughs> That's why you can't buy a Volkswagen out there. They hate that car. <laughs> <laughs> India is a fascinating place. It's incredible. Every time I've gone out there, I I've learned that India is one of the fastest growing economies in the world. And that's down to a volition of how hard the Indian people work. And it's an incredible thing to behold, because one day that means that they might become number one. Yeah, number one. And they can't wait for that day, right? The day when they call their bank and it goes through to a call center. <laughs> right? Right? Well, one of you lot are going to have to put in a fake name and talk to them. <laughs> uh, hello, uh, my name is uh, uh, Manish. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> You got to go to India. India is incredible. Like there, there's a there's an English-speaking comedy circuit out in India. Stand-up comedy has taken off in India big time. I go out there. I do a few jokes in Hindi. They laugh their little turbans off. It's incredible, right? <laughs> yeah, they're not as tight as you think they are. Yeah, <laughs> they will come right off. It's actually quite dangerous. <laughs> right. I get treated like a total alien out there. And when I was out there. Um, I learned that just like in the UK, we have a social pecking order here. You've got, you know, you got your upper classes, the ruling elite, the people who do none of the work and pay none of the taxes, and just somehow get away with it, right? Uh, you've got the middle classes, you've got the working classes, um, and that's how generally it works over here. But see, in India, they have something called the caste system, and it works two ways. It works depending on what your ancestors did and also how light or dark your skin tone is. Um, and that's the reason for that is Indian people, along with people in West Africa, have bought into skin lightening cream. They believe the lighter your skin is, the more opportunities that you have in life, they bought into the paradigm of European beauty. So the caste system works like this. A lot of people think the caste system is to do with the Hindu religion. It's not. It's just politics come to wrap itself up with a bit of religion to help kind of divide people. And this was being explained to me by one of the handlers. I went out to there to do the comedy store gigs in Mumbai, and with this guy who was taking care of me and somebody I've not just invented for the purpose of this routine, right? <laughs> He said, see, Imran, right at the top are the Brahmins. I am a Brahmin. And historically, our ancestors were priests, and they were allowed to study and gain wisdom, and they became the smartest in the land. We also have the lightest of light skin. We are the best. We are right at the top, the Brahmins. In second place are the Kshatriyas. The Kshatriyas were the warriors of India. They fought for India. Not very well against the British, but they tried. <laughs> right? Right? 
and they have slightly darker skin than us Brahmins. In third place are the Vaishas. The Vaishas are the business people of India who own shops and have a bit of money, and they are slightly darker than the Kshatriyas. But in fourth place, the lowest of the low, the ones that we hate the most, are the Shudras, also known as the Dalits or the untouchables. And the reason they have been born into the lowest caste is because they probably did something so heinous in a previous life that they've been born into the lowest caste where they will never be given any love, they will never be allowed to have any ambition, no one will give them any opportunity, and they also have the darkest of dark skin, the lowest of the low, the Shudras. And then according to him, uh, below them, uh, Muslims and black people. <laughs> We're not even playing their game, and they've got a place for us. Right? <laughs> and he was really proud of himself. See, Imran, I'm a Brahmin. I have the lightest of skin. I'm the best of the best. I'm right at the top. And I go, no, above you is a white bloke thinking, thank God I'm not an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> Slight nervous laughter there, and perhaps some people applaud him for the wrong reasons, but I'll take it. Right, so I've traveled, I realize India, even though that's where my ancestors come from, that's not where I fit in. Then I've been out to the Muslim world. I've traveled out there and I find that quite peculiar because I'm not an Arab and because I'm an Indian, they treat me like a bit of an outsider as well. I went out to the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, uh, run by Muslims, a lot of money there, relatively quite strict. Went to Dubai, you must be aware of Dubai, also run by Muslims, relatively quite strict. But a lot of British expats in Dubai, loads of them, because you know, Sharia law isn't half as bad as paying your taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what's that? I get to keep what I earn, and my wife knows not to get any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I met this British couple in Dubai, and the wife was talking to me, and her husband was there as well. She's like, you know what, Imran, we've got a good quality of life here. You know, we've got a nice house, our kids go to a good school, right? It's safe, it's clean, it's efficient, but I'm not allowed to drive our family car unless my husband gives me his written consent. And I was like, that's insane. H how can you live in a place like that? And I look over her shoulder, and her husband's going, He slept on the sofa that night, no. <laughs> and she got deported. <laughs> right, so what does that leave me? I don't fit into the country that where I was born, I guess. I don't fit into the country uh, of my religious affiliation or the country of my ancestry. So that leaves me with the UK, specifically England. I've grown up in England most of my life. And so it's affected the way how I feel I identify myself and how, especially when I identify myself abroad. And you know what? It's 2014 now, it's the 21st century. And I feel that I can identify myself as English. Now, I know some people got an issue with this because this isn't classical English. Yeah? This isn't original English. This is what I like to call English 2.0. <laughs> I was assembled using foreign parts, manufactured overseas, and sent over here to help undercut the domestic workforce. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you applauded, the rest of you evidently voted for UKIP in that last election. Damn! <laughs> <laughs> right. So, hey, English 2.0 is great. I came installed with an additional language, and most of us come in a variety of different colours. <laughs> Mainly brown. <laughs> right, we've got this sneaky Eastern European model doing the rounds at the moment, annoying everybody. <laughs> a lot of people find it very confusing, because it looks like a lot of you, but sounds nothing like you, does it? <laughs> and you never know until it's too late. <laughs> you walk into Nando's one day and go, good afternoon, may I have a chicken burger? Yes, one chicken burger. <laughs> <laughs> when brown people start laughing at the way you talk, you know that you are now on the bottom run. <laughs> <laughs> hey, English 2.0 is great, man, highly efficient. We work through the holidays, Christmas, Easter, bank holiday, it doesn't mean nothing to us. Yeah. We get quadruple pay, some of us use that money to build a giant mosque, it pisses a few people off. <laughs> But the most amazing feature of English 2.0 is the warranty. Yeah. Because if one of us breaks down, there's never a short supply of new ones being shipped in from overseas. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you had to be like, nice, no, too soon, bro, too soon. Since we're in a recession. Don't make fun of us like this. So I realized, you know what, I don't fit in, wherever I go in the world, I don't fit, I don't fit into the country of my birth, not in the country of my ancestry, not in the country of my religious affiliation, not even in the country that I've grown up in. So what options does that really give me? So I realized, when my only goal in life is to be the best person that I can be. That's what I want to do, because that's what defines you as a person, your deeds, not what your ancestors did, because you didn't earn any of that. I want to be a good person. I want to help people, I want to help change the world. And we've got to think of society that we live in now. We live in a society now that's doing all kinds of crazy things. And you know, we're in this horrible culture now where we hate the poor and we worship the wealthy. Hate the poor so bad, like, you know, give an example, we exploit the poor on television. You saw that show on Channel 4. 
Did you see that show Benefit Street? Did you hear about Benefit Street? Yeah. yeah. Now, if you don't know what Benefit Street was, it was a documentary about people who live on benefits. Now, I didn't know that. When I heard about Benefit Street, I thought that was a budget box of chocolates that you could buy at Lidl. <laughs> That joke made it into Telegraph's top jokes of the fringe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, didn't want to get nominated anyway. <laughs> Not bitter. <laughs> I thought Benefit Street would have been great, because you know what? If you, if you were on Benefits, you could go out, you could buy a box of Benefit Street, and then you know what? There would have been chocolates in there that would have appealed to you if you were on Benefits. You know, chocolates that you would have understood. You know, you crack open a box, and inside you've got a little sticky tax evading Toff's finger. <laughs> Little caramel immigrant. <laughs> yeah, and my favourite, Bulgarian surprise. <laughs> Which I, for all the advertising, there's only two in the box. <laughs> Man, we demonise the poor and then we worship the wealthy for no good reason. I'll give you an example. Last year in this country, we took benefits away from single parents and the disabled. Because, you know, after the Paralympics, fuck them, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah, sure, we put them on a parade. Well done, man, you ran the 400 metres in 20 minutes. Great, anyone could have done that, right? We put them on this massive parade to show the world how great we are with some of the most disadvantaged people in society, and then we took their benefits away from some of the most vulnerable people in society, single parents and the disabled. Yet, at the same time, the royal family got a 10% raise. 10%, that's a lot of money, right? That's a lot of money, okay? That's millions of pounds. And some people are cool with this, go, hey, man, don't talk out against the royal family like that. You should know better. See, the royal family, right? They deserve that 10% raise because they are a tourist attraction a tourist attraction yeah well so were the pigeons in Trafalgar Square <laughs> but once we realized that they were pests snatching food out of the hands of ordinary people we got rid of them <laughs> <laughs> you know what I got to be careful what I say about the royal family the last Muslim boat to get involved with them didn't come out of it good <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the BBC is going to be editing this bit out. <laughs> What's that, sweet? Uh, in English, come on, give it a go. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, did you say vote yes? All right, do we have actual Scottish people in the house? Yeah. Oh, Scottish people, I love Scottish people. I just want to know, Scottish people also, uh, do we have any Irish and Welsh by any chance? I just, don't worry, I'm not from immigration. <laughs> Relax here, this would be one hell of a disguise if I was, innit? <laughs> So how long do you intend to stay, hmm? <laughs> Get out! <laughs> right. Well, I discovered Scottish people, Irish people and Welsh people, collectively, you guys are known as the Celtic people. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. See, when I discovered that about you guys, I realised that I love you guys the most. <laughs> you know why? Because you guys are the Palestinians of the British Isles. <laughs> This was all yours. You had your own language, your culture, your way of life. Before you invaded and occupied, you guys want to get to fighting. <laughs> Some of you will look at me going, what happened to English 2.0, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Is it the, so are you Scottish people uh, if, who are voting yes? Give me a cheer. Yeah. Scottish people voting no, give me a cheer. Yeah. Oh, no, you know what? I'm just going to let you into this, right? There's this horrible sentiment that goes around how Scottish people can't take care of themselves. You don't realise how defiant your spirit is. I'll give you an example. I was saying earlier on, some people think the royal family are a tourist attraction. They're a tourist attraction for England, yes, but not for Scotland. You don't benefit from the royal family being a tourist attraction. I know you've got the Duke of Edinburgh, but I don't think that counts, does it? <laughs> you guys might want to look into that. I don't think he's from around here. <laughs> Check Wikipedia. That's normally accurate. <laughs> Right? Scotland doesn't benefit from the royal family being a tourist attraction, so what is your tourist attraction? And that's when I realised how genius the Scottish people are, right? You don't have a royal family that is a tourist attraction. What is your tourist attraction? You guys made up some bullshit about a dinosaur in a lake. <laughs> and every gullible idiot from around the planet continues to turn up to stare at the nothing that has been happening around that water. <laughs> Genius. Right. right, and there's this horrible sentiment. It's all right, sweetheart, I bought my own material. It's all right. <laughs> Bless her, she's probably just alarmed that I'm even speaking English. This is probably... <laughs> probably upset I haven't come out and bought her a menu. So... <laughs> right. 
I'll tell you guys, when I do the comedy clubs back home in England, there's this horrible sentiment that goes around the comedy clubs in England. Yeah, Scotland doesn't, can't be independent. They don't know what they're doing. They're too backwards and stupid. They can't cope on their own. They need the rest of Britain. You don't realise how defiant Scotland is and how defiant the Scottish spirit is. And I'll give you an example. Scotland is the most defiant country on planet Earth, yeah? What, you think Cuba's defiant because they stood up to the US, right? And said, no, we're going to say no to democracy. We're going to have communism. You think some of these countries in the Arab Spring that smashed up the place and tore down their dictatorships only to have them replaced by new ones, right? <laughs> You think those guys are defiant? Nah, Scotland is the most defiant country on planet Earth. You know why? Because Scotland is the only country on planet Earth where Coca-Cola cannot become the number one selling soft drink. Because <laughs> you guys have got iron brew. Yeah? You don't even spell it right out of spite. The rest of the world, don't, we don't even know what it is. Just luminous orange. We think it's radioactive. That's why we're too scared to drink it. Yeah. You guys drink so much of it, no wonder this is the primordial soup of people with orange hair. <laughs> guys, you have been um, a total pleasure. Uh, thank you very much for supporting the BBC, uh, 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 the BBC Radio Asian Network comedy show. Really appreciate it. My name's Imran Yusuf. Peace out. God bless. I love him. Love him. Imran Yusuf, everybody. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe, share, or like the video. Or perhaps you can come down here to the Comedy Store in London and see me sometime. Thanks a lot. Hey, subscribe, share, or like Imran Yusuf's YouTube channel. He's so good, and you should share it to everybody else because you know people like him need the help. <laughs> Is that okay?